The Yamaha R3, the bike that new riders always put up to comparison in the beginner bike category. This is, or maybe was given the current climate of beginner bikes, the cream of the crop when it comes to the small displacement sport bike fun, and there's a good reason for it. But the question is, why? Why did one little bike stand out in the sea of other little bikes? What made this bike better? Why? Me, of course. Hi, my name is Yami Noob, and I made the R3 great. Just kidding. Though I do consider me buying an R3 as my first bike and making videos about it at the right time to be one of the big reasons that my channel took off like it did way back in the day before I even made any of my lists. Because if there's one thing that the prospective squids like to do more than actually go ride, it's watch videos on the internet so they can live vicariously through them. Now, since the R3 is actually a fairly recent addition to the motorcycle landscape, we're going to be taking a slightly different approach to this So You Want a Blank Bike video. I mean, how interesting can a five-year-old motorcycle's history really be? Instead, we're going to talk more about the bikes that surround the R3 because with the exception of maybe the CBR300R, the R3 is one of the smallest bikes in the smallest basement category. But don't let its smaller engine fool you, this is one of the best bikes you could possibly start on. So let's knock out the history section here really quick. The R3 was first released in 2015. At the time, you had a couple of different choices if you wanted a beginner sport bike. There was the Ninja 300, which we went into exhaustive detail about recently, but suffice it to say, it was the most recognized little bike out there. It had a 296cc parallel twin that made about 40 horsepower and 13.5 foot-pounds of torque. Honda bumped their little CBR250 to a 286 single and made 30 horsepower and 19.9 foot-pounds of torque. And while it made a lot less horsepower, when you're riding these little bikes around, having more torque actually makes them more fun to ride. If you were feeling spicy, you could grab the KTM RC390, which made 43 ponies and 26 foot-pounds of stork. Of stork? Of torque. 26 foot-pounds of stork. Scream an eagle, baby. It was and still is the raciest of the small displacement motorcycles with a fairly significant racing scene. They feature their own cup class. I actually own one as a small bike training tool. Ari Henning used to race one. He also had like 15 different issues with it. They're a, a little bit of a maligned motorcycle. Well, let's get back on topic here. With some of those reliability issues, you had a 50-50 shot of the engine blowing up on you and leaving you with a fine piece of Austrian garbage garbage in one hand and a hefty repair bill in the other. You could have also looked at some smaller displacement dual sports like the DRZ400 or the WR250, but if our analytics have taught us anything, it's to never speak about dual sports, so we're not going to mention it. But you know what our data does say? That y'all are a bunch of scraggly pube dudes who need to get yourself trimmed up. You already know that Manscaped is the only solution to what ails you, my dude. Not only do they make the Lawnmower 3.0, which is the only trimming appliance guaranteed to leave a sack smoother than Rossi's throttle control, but they've also dropped the all new Weed Whacker. Have you looked in the mirror lately? You need to cut down on those nasty looking forest of nose hairs that you've left untended for your entire life. I mean, those hairs are so thick Tarzan could swing on them. Well, with the new Weed Whacker, you can clean that up in seconds. Just shove it up your nose and let it rip. You can pick one up by clicking the link down below and using the code NOOB20 for 20% off your order. Manscaped has been a long time partner of the channel and I actually do use their stuff so you know it's of the utmost quality. Thanks for Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Click the link down below, it does support the channel quite a bit. Let's get back to the R3. So that's what Yamaha was facing when they decided to dive into the beginner sport bike segment back in the day. So what did they bring to the party? Well, the 2015 R3 featured a Cheater 321cc parallel twin engine that made 42 horsepower and 21.8 foot-pounds of torque. It weighed in at 368 pounds wet, which was heavier than all the other bikes, but it was almost as powerful as the RC390 and it cost less. It sported a 31 inch seat height, which is on the high side, but its handlebars were high enough to keep you out of the crazy forward tuck you get on the RC. While it didn't have any adjustability in the suspension beyond preload in the rear, the suspension was a little bit better tuned than all the other bikes. It had an optional ABS and a 12,500 RPM redline with all the power coming in after 7 grand, meaning you got to feel like Rossi while you were attempting to drag knee even though you were only leaned over 15 degrees. It was an instant success. It also looked really cool. It humiliated the Honda and finally dethroned the Ninja 300, taking its place as the top of the beginner bike list. 
In 2019, they updated the R3's looks to bring it in line with the R1 and the R6, meaning that if you go and get the little R3, you're getting a bike that actually looks pretty cool. The fake Ram Air up front, the aggressive plastics, the MotoGP-derived triple tree, all the little cuts in the fairings, and the new logos just scream fast, even though you're on a bike that takes 5.5 seconds to get from 0 to 60. It also received upside-down forks, making it one of the few bikes in the category with a real racy-looking suspension. Although, a Grom has upside-down forks, so who can say? We even gave away a brand new R3 last year on YammyNoob.co, and the winner was a first-time rider, which was super cool. He did bin it learning how to wheelie, but hey, I couldn't be happy than sub squid out there is riding an R3 just like I would when I was starting out. It just warms my heart. So since there's been such a short run on these bikes, we're not going to break down the issues by generation, but rather a couple of big ones. On the first R3s, there were two main issues that people reported. The first was that the clutch's pressure plate was prone to breaking due to an insufficient load rating, and that means that the clutch might not disengage properly, which would in turn cause some issues shifting. The second was an issue where the oil pump pressure wasn't properly regulated, causing the oil pump gear to fail, which would starve the engine of oil leading to total engine seizure. Recalls were issued for both of these issues. Finally, there was an issue with the upper triple clamp that meant that it was susceptible to cracking while riding. All these issues were sorted, but if you want to be safe, you might as well go for a later model year. There's probably a million of these bikes up at your local Craigslist since plenty of people bought these as their starter bikes and are moving up to their next motorcycle. Fun fact, the Yamaha R3 is actually Yamaha's best-selling motorcycle for a few years running now, if I remember correctly. So the R3 was a well-built bike, mostly, that was a critical darling and well received by the motorcycle buying public at large. Cool, but the times they are a change in and now it seems that new riders are completely spoiled for choice when it comes to their first bike, so let's take a look at the new competitors to the R3 and see if it still stacks up. The first and most obvious place to start is with the Ninja 400. The Ninja 400 was Kawasaki's answer to the R3 and since they couldn't build a better 300, they made a very large big brain move and just built a bigger bike. The Ninja 400 makes about 48 horsepower, A2 compliant, still, don't worry about it, and 28 foot-pounds of torque, weighing in at 366 pounds as well. So on paper, it's a better bike, right? Eh, sort of. If all you're concerned is with spec sheets, I would say you're going about it all wrong. The Ninja 400 looks pretty aggressive, but it actually sits a little bit less aggressively in the ergonomics department over the R3. From experience, the Ninja 400 actually flicks in a little bit quicker and feels really great to ride on track. I did a review of the Ninja 400 versus the RC390 on track earlier this year. Please go check it out. It's a pretty cool video. And the 400, given its bump and displacement, makes a pretty good amount of torque down low, whereas the R3 feels more racer replica with its high RPM redline. You really want to pump out all the way to 12,500 RPM. To be honest, the Ninja 400 feels more like a naked bike with fairings, which makes sense given that Kawasaki basically took off the plastics and then sold it as a Z400. We actually did a pretty detailed breakdown between the Ninja 400 and the R3 if you want to go check out those videos as well. Now let's compare it to the bike Spite and I proudly pro claimed as the best starter bike ever, the KTM Duke 390. Yeah, I know it's not a sport bike, but given how much the Duke offers and the price that it's asking, it is worth considering even if you're a complete and total sport bike simp. The Duke 390 uses the same 373cc single that you'd find in the RC390, and it makes 43 horsepower and 26 foot-pounds of torque but it comes in a nice naked bike package that almost feels like a baby supermoto. It weighs in at a featherweight 329 pounds of wet and that is unbelievably light. It makes the little thumper feel so rowdy and playful that all you wanna do with the bike is hop curbs, pop wheelies, and even scramble it a little bit if you're feeling brave. But it doesn't stop there. The Duke features a TFT dash, which is kind of unheard of in the beginner bike space. You can disengage the rear wheel ABS with its supermoto mode and even use Bluetooth to connect your bike to the phone via the My Ride app. It's got backlit controls, tons of aftermarket support and on and on. The Duke really is quite a lot for your money and at 5,499 bucks it's really not that expensive. Everything from the price to its upside down front fork seems like it's a shot right at the R3. By comparison the R3 has a very basic LED screen with a bar tachometer and only very basic information. Now it's true that I don't think a TFT should necessarily replace an LED one but if you want that cool factor there's nothing like seeing that big dash light up on the Duke saying ready to race. Also, the way the R3 makes power is a lot more mellow and reserved than the Duke, which makes it feel less playful. And wouldn't you know, we're also giving away a Duke 390 over on Aminube.co. It's a little too late to get entered for that sweeps right now, but we've spent a long time with the bike and Spite put together a video where he rode the Duke around for a few weeks to really see what it was like. You can check that video out as well. But what if you want a beginner bike you might end up hanging on to for a little while longer? Well, you could always look at the CBR500R, which side note, I think this is the reason why the CBR300R sucks so bad. I mean, why pour any money into a wimpy 300 when you can have a 500, right? Sure, maybe the CBR500R in the 
R3 aren't exactly in the same class, but we here at Yami New pride ourselves on comparing motorcycles that have no business being compared, so screw it, let's see how it does against the R3. The CBR500R is a 471cc parallel twin that makes 50 horsepower and 31.7 foot-pounds of torque. It weighs in at 428 pounds, which is a little bit heavier for the class, and costs 6,600 bucks. Man, that Honda premium is real. That's an awful lot for a bike when a used XSR700 can be had for like $5,500. But anyway, the CBR is a bike that you can own for a lot longer than a 300 since it's more comfortable at higher speeds and you can more easily carry a passenger. Not to mention that there's quite a bit of added goodies on here. You actually get a nice looking LED turn indicators compared to the floppy Yamaha ones, preload adjustable front forks, which is pretty awesome, and a backlit LED display not too dissimilar from the one featured on the CBR650R. If you're looking for a bike you can hold on to for more than your first year of riding, it might be worth looking into the CBR500R. Also, it would be silly to not mention the brand new MT-03, it's just the naked bike variant of the R3. We had the chance to ride one around when Yamaha so graciously gave us a press bike, and it's very, very similar to the R3. It's literally just an R3 that's naked. But the big thing is, it costs a lot less than the R3, even though they're basically the same bike. Taller riders do be warned though, the MT-03 is prohibitively small, so if you're north of 6'1", 6'2", you probably want to look at the R3 or another motorcycle. So with all this competition from both inside and out, what could Yamaha do to improve the R3? Well, I don't think making an R4 makes a lot of sense since the R3 is pretty perfect for riders on restricted licenses, but if it worked for Kawasaki, it might work for Yamaha. That trick would only really work only once though. The best thing they can do is follow KTM's lead, add a TFT display, give you some switchable modes, increase the fit and finish of the bike a little bit more to make it more desirable, because as much as I love the new R3, it is looking a little outgunned nowadays. However, I would still wholeheartedly recommend the R3 to any new rider out there looking to take those first steps into riding. I still look back fondly on my time with my little red R3, exploring new places and meeting new people. Riding quickly became a massive part of my life, and I can thank the R3 for that. And just like it should thank me for making it so dang popular. Yamaha, seriously, a thank you is all that I ask. So my sweet little squid, this video is actually over, but lucky for you, click on this one right here. You can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll be here waiting for you. You're gonna click on that video.